Uh, I'd like to present to you today the idea of autophagy as a common and targetable feature of malignancy. The idea was introduced by my co-investigator and partner in research, Dr. John Pollack, who is sitting here on the first row. Uh, Mr. Vincent Klump was a very major figure in our research because he is an immunohistochemistry guru and uh, he can stain any slides with any markers, of course, if they stain appropriately, but we are very thankful for his help in our studies. Dr. Robert Camp from Pathology helped with the TMA microarray and data analysis, and Sumar um, Sidekwe from Pathology also helped with uh, the aqua studies and tumor microarray. What is autophagy? Autophagy is self-eating of cytoplasmic organelles. It's induced by stress to the endoplasmic reticulum, such as hypoxia and nutrient deprivation. Autophagy provides alternative energy source in the absence of blood supply, for example, in wounds and in tumors. Uh, ER stress is very common and is virtually seen in all melanomas. Autophagy is associated with poor patient survival in some carcinomas. Now, how does the autophagosome form? It starts with a structure that is called a phagopore, which is a membrane that elongates and eventually circles around and bound, including many different proteins organelles and cytoplasmic constituents to form the autophagosome. LC3B microtubule associated light chain, 3B, is a very well-known marker for autophagosomes, and this is the marker that we studied uh, mainly. Here is an example of an autophagosome by electron microscopy. You can see it here in a melanoma cell one uh, very um, unique feature of autophagosome is the double membrane. They're bound by, by double membranes. And here we see heavily melanized melanosomes within this autophagosome. Does autophagy exist in normal cells? Under normal conditions with normal oxygen supply and normal nutrients, autophagy is inhibited by a protein kinase named uh, mTOR, right here. When nutrients become low and there is hypoxia, this protein kinase, kinase is inhibited and then this induces autophagy. On the other hand, hypoxia-inducible transcription factors also induce uh, autophagy. Autophagosome autophagosomes are formed, they dock, and they fuse with lysosome to produce autophagolysosome, in which contents are eventually degraded and converted to glucose for the ATP production in glycolysis. However, in malignancy, there is a different story. Warb the Warburg effect in malignancy has been described in uh, 1930 by Otto Warburg. This is the, the, the so-called aerobic glycolysis. In malignancy, even in the presence of oxygen, mitochondria and the Krebs cycle are suppressed, and glycolysis is constitutive, always active, major pathway for ATP production because the glucose is the chief energy source um, in these conditions. Uh, we know that glucose metabolism is enhanced in cancer cells, and this is the basis for PET scan. Autophagy is thought to be a component of the aerobic uh, glycolysis pathway. How can this information be translated from the bench to the bedside? Here is the autophagy paradox. Autophagy supports tumor growth by providing an energy source, or under different conditions, autophagy may suppress the tumor growth 
and lead to self-cannibalism. There are clinical trials currently underway to explore both hypotheses, both approaches, uh, some in combination with chemotherapy. The majority of the preclinical and clinical trials have focused on activation of autophagy to increase cancer cell death through self-cannibalism. Uh, however, a smaller number of clinical trials concentrate on inhibition strategies of autophagy. Despite all that, very little is known about the prevalence of autophagy in human malignancy. We try to answer the question, what is the incidence and the prognostic significance of autophagy in solid malignancies? We decided to study it in malignant melanoma, breast carcinoma, and multi-tumor tissue microarray. We investigated the presence of autophagy in malignant melanoma by studying it using staining with anti-LC3B uh, marker, which is a known autophagosome marker. The other two uh, markers uh, were experimental markers, and for the purposes of this uh, talk, we'll just concentrate on anti-LC3B anti marker. In normal epidermis, we found that autophagy is absent or minimal. Here is an H and E hematoxylin and eosin stain of epidermis and dermis. We see that the keratinocytes and the melanocytes um, appear normal, and there is no LC3B staining. In other words, um, autophagy is absent. In early melanoma in situ, autophagy was also absent or minimal, similar to, uh, to the um, expression in normal epidermis. Melanoma cells from melanoma in situ on H and E staining and negative LC3B staining. In florid melanoma in situ, we can see here a small nest of melanoma cells there was vesicular staining for LC3B. In other words, autophagy was present in florid malignant melanoma in situ. Autophagy was also present in 12 cases of invasive melanoma, uh, of invasive melanoma that we studied, confirmed by the presence of vesicular positive staining with anti-LC3B antibody. We conducted two separate studies for invasive melanomas, and in all 31 cases altogether, autophagy was present. In addition, we studied melanoma tumor microarray from Dr. Rim's laboratory from Yale Pathology and NCI. The melanoma tissue microarray we stained by immunohistochemistry using the anti-LC3 antibody in which we found vesicular staining typical for autophagosome, for, auto, for autophagy. In addition, we studied immunofluorescence by the aqua method, automated uh, quantitative analysis. In melanoma tumor microarray, the autophagosome marker LC3B was highly expressed in both primary melanomas and metastatic melanomas. There was a much higher expression in uh, the meta metastatic melanoma as a, this is not really working well, in uh, metastatic melanoma as opposed to primary uh, melanoma cases. We also found very high LC3B expression in melanomas by immunohistochemistry on the NCI tissue microarray. As you can see here, the majority of the primary melanomas as well as the metastatic melanomas were positive 2 and 3 plus for anti-LC3B staining. Unlike uh, aqua, we did not find increased staining in the metastatic melanomas as opposed to primary melanomas. We also studied a breast carcinoma tissue microarray to see whether autophagy was present in this cancer. And similar staining 
vesicula, which is very typical of autophagosomes, was found with immunohistochemistry by LC3B staining. By aqua, the intensity of LC3B staining in breast carcinoma showed that in primary breast carcinoma with positive lymph nodes, there was a much higher expression of LC3B than the expression in primary breast carcinoma, carcinomas which were lymph node negative. In addition, the intensity of the LCB staining increased with higher nuclear grade for the breast carcinoma. High LC3B staining was linked to lower clinical outcome, to poor, I'm sorry, to poor clinical outcome in these breast carcinoma cases. This diagram shows that the majority of breast carcinomas with negative lymph nodes stained uh, very low for LC3B uh, marker, whereas the breast carcinomas with positive lymph nodes um, stained the high percentage of these cases stained two and three plus for the anti-LC3B marker. Similar trend was noticed, although not that dramatic, with primary and metastatic uh, melanomas. In addition, we studied a multi-tumor tissue microarray to see the LC3B staining intensity in different types of tumors. The microarray contained 25 different malignancies, and we found that the majority, a high percentage, about 90% of these different malignancies stained highly intensely, two and three plus, with the LC3B uh, autophagosome uh, marker. In summary, LC3B staining, two and three plus, was highly expressed in a great majority of primary melanomas and metastatic melanomas, as well as in different malignancies. In breast carcinoma, primary breast carcinoma with positive lymph nodes expressed the autophagic marker, whereas those with negative lymph nodes showed a very little staining. In conclusion, Autophagy appears to be a constitutive metabolic state for most malignancies. Inhibiting autophagy may be effective for the treatment of malignancies depending, uh, depriving cells of an important energy source. Stimulating autophagy may induce self-cannibalism and self-death. Now, if autophagy is constitutive in malignancies, how do they survive, grow, and metastasize without self-destruction? We hypothesize that should autophagy be linked to phagocytosis in cancer cells, as it is in macrophages, nutrients could be continuously phagocytosed from external sources. Such a system would bypass self-cannibalism and ensure a positive metabolic energy balance. Therefore, autophagy might be very promising in clinical studies and in our battle with cancer. Thank you very much.